اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ولن ترضا انکل یہود ولن نصارا حتی تتبع ملتہم صدق اللہ صدق اللہ مران عظیم My dear brothers and sisters on Wednesday the 14th of March 1984 in your Gulf Times there was a beautiful cartoon and this cartoon portrayed the would-be president of the United States a candidate trying to reach the presidential seat, the White House. But in this cartoon, our brother Ittihad shows that any president of the United States has to pass through the Star of David, meaning the Jews. Without the Star of David, there is no success for any president or would-be president to the United States seat. Now, this Star of David represents the six million Jews in America, which forms what is called the Jewish lobby. Now, without the support of the Jewish lobby, no president can be ever elected to that seat. If they have the moral support and the vote support of the Jews, the president can be nominated. Now, the secret of this was revealed by President Truman in 1948, the power of the Jews. In 1948, Israel, this Jewish state in the Middle East, in the heart of the Muslim lands, in Palestine, they established a Jewish state. And within two minutes of the declaration of independence by Ben-Gurion, President Truman, he recognized Israel. Within two minutes, as if Truman, like a young man, a young groom, at his wedding ceremony, he was just prepared to say, when questioned, do you take this woman as your lawfully wedded wife? And he was waiting with open mouth just to say, I do. And within two minutes, President Truman did exactly that. He says, I do. I recognize Israel. Subsequently, a reporter, a newspaper man, meets Truman at a press conference and reminds him, he says, look, what was all the hurry for? You know, in due time, you could have recognized Israel like the rest of the uh, countries of the world. But why the hurry? You know, there are 100 million Arabs and these 100 million Arabs will get offended with you. In answer to that, President Truman he said, he said, there are no Arabs in my constituency, meaning that no Arabs voted me into power. The people who vote me into power in my constituency are the Jews. So I have to placate the Jews. So the secret is you have, you need people in America to have that power of vote what the Jews have, they have 6 million bulk vote. Now, how are we going to put 6 million Arabs into America? Because America will not allow that, except for a few brilliant brains of ours. Brain, brain, when they go for education, they like to keep them there, exploit them. But as workers, as laborers, or for any other reason, if you want to go there, most probably there are barriers which you can never overcome. So how are we going to get 6 million Arabs or Muslims or Pakistanis or Bangladeshis who might be sympathetic to us, our cause in America? Impossible. The only other way is that there are people in America whom, who are called the Afro-Americans. They are now being described as the Bilalians, the people of Hazrat Bilal. These Bilalians, these American Negroes, if we can have them converted to Islam, and I can assure my brothers and sisters that at a less cost than the price of a fighter plane, 
this thing can be done. If we are prepared to do do dawa work among the Afro-Americans, in less than the price of a fighter plane, we can have the six million to counterbalance the Jewish vote. But now, secondly, the Americans have been programmed, they have been brainwashed into believing that Palestine belongs to the Jews. Now, this sickness had been developed over a long period of time. And the manner in which it was developed was that this Christian Bible, which is the book of authority for the Christians, this Christian Bible, more than two-thirds of it, more than two-thirds of this Bible is called the Old Testament by the Christians, which means everything before Jesus, which was the books of the Jews that the Christians have now owned up, they have inherited, and in that portion of the book called the Old Testament of the Holy Bible, they say that God Almighty had promised Palestine to the Jews. And they quote from the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, in which God Almighty is supposed to have told Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam that I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now from that, the Jews and the Christians have taken that God Almighty had promised Palestine to the Jews. But when we analyze this so-called prophecy, this is a prophecy, a basharat, which is supposed to happen. When we analyze it, we find that it is not true to history. Because if this is the word of God, and if God Almighty had promised it to Abraham, that I will give unto thee, to you, O Abraham, and to thy seed after thee, meaning your children, all the land of Canaan. In actual fact, when we read the book of Genesis at the end, we find that when Abraham died, his sons Ismail and Ishaq went to bury the father, Abraham. But when they went to bury him, there was not land. They didn't have land to bury the father. So they went and bought a piece of land sufficient to bury the father. And the Bible says, this book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, it says, and Abraham didn't have enough land to rest his foot upon. In other words, this was not the promise of God. But even if we accept it as such, what does it say? It says, I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Now, who is the seed of Abraham? When we ask this to the Christians, they say the Jews. When we ask the Jews, they say we, we are the seed of Abraham. But are not the Bani, Israel, Bani Ismail, the children of Ismail, are they not his seed? In this very first book of the Jewish and the Christian Bible, in the book of Genesis, that is the first book, no less than 12 places we read. In chapter 16 of Genesis, Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, he pours out a prayer. And in that prayer, he's asking Allah bari ta'ala that Ismail, his firstborn, his son, may Allah give him long life and health and prosperity. So Allah says, according to the Bible, he said, I will, as, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, means I have heard your prayer. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation, because he is thy seed. Somewhere else again in the same book, and as for Ishmael thy son, and again as for Ishmael thy seed, no less than 12 places in the so-called Torah of the Jews, which is this first book of the Bible, which is the first book of uh, Genesis, no less than 12 places Hazrat Ismail alayhi salam, is referred to as the son and seed of Abraham. So, if he is also the son and seed of Abraham, why should they be deprived of this privilege of living in their own motherland, in their own hearts and homes. But now, since the Christian has been programmed and the Jews has been programmed, we have to deprogram them, reprogram them. And without this reprogramming, we have not taken the trouble to discuss this matter among the Christians, to show them the anomaly of their position, that what you are claiming that this land belongs to the Jews, in actual fact, it does not belong to the Jews. How did the Jews become possessors of the land? We know that in history, when they came out 
and by Hazrat, under Hazrat Musa alayhi salam from Egypt and uh, under Joshua, they went and conquered the land by force of arms. And by force of arms, if one nation conquers another, how does it entitle that nation to have the moral right to such a property? So it is something that we have not done. And because of the lack of uh, response on our part to reprogram, to put our case forward to the Jews and the Christians, we are you know, suffering more than what we ought to. Wa akhirul dawan and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.